intro. America, yeah. Hope everybody had a good 4th of July. We're in the Lesser Saints Discord. Every Friday, 4.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. I had a decent 4th of July. It, uh, it, it, there, there was a, there was a hiccup there, but it was decent enough. Nice. It was my yesterday that sucked. <laughs> yeah. My 4th of July was pretty cool. Guy on the river just threw a party. Went there, saw a bunch of local bands play. Some of them are getting really good. Hmm. Um. I'll privately share that information with you guys if you want. But <laughs> I went to a county yeah. fair yesterday. It was fun. Thanks. So for the uh, for the one person watching, which is us. Yeah, which is us. <laughs> ah, my computer wasn't working yesterday, and we nearly couldn't do the show because of it. Yep. And in the process of trying to fix it, my laptop took a shit, and I had to fix that before I could fix my computer. <laughs> but yeah, then him and Tables got together in a call, did some obscene things that I can't mention here, and we're here. Yeah. Yeah, we used about five. To fix I, them both, okay? I spent about five hours. I'm supposed on to say it. that out loud. It's not witchcraft, though, so we're fine. Then why is there a pentagram painted in the middle of my floor? Look, I don't know what art projects you do, but it wasn't witchcraft. Witchcraft is Hold gender. It's audio. they craft. Right <laughs> it's not witchcraft. Witchcraft is gendered. <laughs> witchcraft. witchcraft isn't gendered. <laughs> Sorry, but... What did you say after I said, why is there a pentagram painted in the middle of my floor? Uh, I said, I don't know what you do uh, as part of your art installments, but uh, it's not witchcraft because witchcraft is gendered. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you yeah. don't know me. Just like the Spanish language is gendered, which is why they turned on Latinx so fast. Yeah, people are still trying to push that. Good luck. Yeah. It's Why the same the people so that say you shouldn't judge other people over their culture, though, too. So that's the <laughs> weirdest part about it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's almost like they don't really have standards. Funny, that. It's almost like they see one road and don't have any nuance in their opinion. Careful, Jables, you're bringing up the dangerous word. What, opinions? opinions or nuance. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the dangerous N word. Oh. Not that one, the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you mean. Nipples? What? <laughs> I said nitwit. Oh, I don't know why my, I my, my son is up. Here. I can hear his feet pounding on the floor oh, like no. his dad. <laughs> that was really scary you, yesterday. At least you have an early warning system. Mm -hmm. Well, that was that, that was kind of unnerving yesterday because I, I had my computer apart. And he kept coming into my office and I was like, please don't touch anything. I love you, but please don't touch anything. Get the fuck out. I love you. Get the fuck out. <laughs> no, no. No, not the jam. Not the jam. Yeah. Sort of was your computer pitch. apart? Were you just trying to see if it was a connection issue? I, yeah. Okay. Also... Um, I, I pulled it apart so that I could pull my drives off and uh, check them with the laptop. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which is what I was doing when my laptop took a shit. <laughs> uh, Hi, Papa! 
did you do like full virus scans and stuff after you got shit working again? No, because I figured out what it was. What was it? Bad partition? Somehow uh, a setting in the BIOS, which did not change, uh, started causing issues. <laughs> Okay. There was no change to the to to the setting in the BIOS. But as soon as I changed it to this other setting, it started working just fine. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Mm. That's weird. Yeah, it's very weird. It's kinda like when uh when we moved from the uh the duplex to this place, a single setting this same setting got changed somehow without the computer being on and the computer wouldn't boot. And the moment I changed that... Hi, Bubba. The moment I changed that setting, it booted. All right. Yeah, it's just weird stuff. I like stuff. how Windows updated and said that none of the programs I have can use this microphone anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why would you do that? Those programs have nothing to do with you, Windows. Leave them alone. Yeah. They're not hurting you. They're just doing what they're supposed to do. Don't need to change their settings. Yeah, the only thing I could think of for that move was that somehow, during the move, the a cosmic ray came down and just... Randomly struck the computer just right to change a one to a zero or a zero to a one And that's what caused the issue because that that does or that can happen. It's exceedingly rare on earth, but it can happen It happens often enough that there are several speed runs that have been accomplished because of it. Yeah that's <laughs> But it is not common. Most people don't realize it's the case. Most people don't even know that that happens. Yeah. No, like, most when people... I, when I talk like, to just, like, casual users, and I... Like, there's a lot of stuff like Cosmic Rays that can happen to your computer. It's like, I just don't understand why it's working. And I'll be like, maybe a Cosmic Ray changes 0 to a 1. They're like, what? That's fucking nonsense. <laughs> Yeah, when no, I when I made that weird. <laughs> when I made that joke about that being the case for yesterday's issues, uh, Burb was like, "Did you just pull that out of the random excuse generator?" <laughs> no, oh, no, I'm pretty no, sure no. that's happened before to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it happens to speedrunners. Like, some of the best times are because of just a complete fluke cosmic ray. Yeah. That just changed one, like, changed one pixel of a thing. One in a million chance that they just so happen to get. Yeah. And if they hadn't, they would not have that run, which... Speaking of Sometimes video games, do you want to talk about Rockstar being important. an abomination? Yeah, since we're on games. Yeah, sometimes luck is the biggest factor in a speedrun. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to share this real quick because I was watching it before the, the show started. <laughs> what is this? Exactly what it says. <laughs> you know what? It's funny that this comes up because uh, on the Snark Tank with like Chris Reagan, some black guy, and Tom Sweeney. Mm -hmm. uh, this week they were making jokes that the Titan submarine was actually sent down there to find the stingray that killed Steve Irwin because careful that bubba don't break the mirror became the king ray and turned the titanic into his base and 
as and it's all to make plans to kill Steve Irwin's son. And so the <laughs> Titan was going down there to investigate. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, it imploded because of the stingrays. This shows me, though, that like the stingrays still have to kind of worry about the crab mafia. Yeah. Because like this whole video is like, they're observing crabs with like a little robot that they've dressed up to look like a crab. Mm -hmm. And a stingray mm -hmm. starts attacking the robot. And then all the crabs start to surround and cover the robot like one of us, one of mm -hmm. us. <laughs> yeah. God damn. That's really interesting. Why did you post this right now? Why didn't you post this half hour ago? <laughs> I, was, I was watching it before the show, and I got into an extended discussion with you about military procurement and aircraft. It's only a oh, Mer video. That wasn't even military procurement. That was just the aircraft. You want to talk military procurement. That's a whole other can of bullshit. Yeah, it is. <laughs> That'd be a uh, long for, conversation. For I'm going to share this video with the audience. Just, just so they know what we're looking at. It's, it's just crabs being bros. Yeah. Well, crabs aren't always being bros. They just like to stick together. One crab tries to crawl out. It's like, nah, come back here. <laughs> yeah, I'd say it was more... Um, military... We all live or we all die. One is of it? <laughs> it's, the, it's the crab mafia. Yeah, it's the crab. Yo. Anyway, no one's sir, watching except Jables. <laughs> yeah. We got three viewers, but uh, I don't know if any of them are actually viewing. Wait, I'm watching. Anyways. I'm not including us in that statement. I'm saying the users yeah, users yeah, in that's... chat. We've got three. It shows two viewers. There's three of us, so I don't know how it's only showing two of us viewing. Unless Jables isn't actually watching. real fucky with watching. the numbers lately. Yeah. Yeah. I don't trust it. You shouldn't. Shouldn't trust right. Twitch. Period. We should move yeah. to kick. Fuck Twitch. We totally should. Fuck Twitch. I can say the N-word on Twitch on kick. <laughs> well, it's only 15 minutes I'm in. Maybe I people can. will see this. <laughs> We're talking about moving to kick. We may dual stream for a little bit, but we're talking about moving to kick. Seems like yeah. fun over there. It, and by Still talking about we out. mean it's been discussed on and off for several months. Yeah. Especially I personally don't care, but... I, I brought it up way back before, like, any of these big contracts were being made to XQC or anything. Like... Yeah. XQC, I just, that's, I've fine. Just been... that's a quality content creator right there. Yeah, he's fine. He streams for, like, eight hours a day. There's some good stuff every once in a while. Well, that's just getting into laws of averages. Yeah, that's what happens. Well, it looks like all the big, big people have moved over to kick already. Uh, some of them. I see Amaranth, which I don't yeah. know what the fuck that situation is. Yeah, Pokimane's not moving. Because she's like anti-gambling or something. Is there gambling on Kick? No, but it's owned by uh, I think the company is called Slack, the online crypto gambling website. Ah, uh, slots and casinos. Got it. I see that that section. Yeah. Hmm. Well, of course, those are the first people that moved there because you can't uh, you can't do a lot of that on Twitch anymore. Nope. 
We should but start. From what to... I've been checking out, like the gambling website doesn't even put their own advertisements on anything that's not already a gambling stream. So, yeah, that's my understanding. Sure, yeah. I I don't like. I am not a proponent of gambling. I might buy a lotto ticket every once in a while because hey. On the off, exceedingly off chance I win, cool, but it's only a buck, and uh, yeah. I don't do it often. I enjoy yeah. playing games that people gamble on, but I never actually wager anything. I, uh, I don't know, I like going to the casino with like 40 bucks to lose, yeah. and Hang out with some friends, chain smoke cigarettes, yeah, have a couple drinks. That, that's one thing. If you're willing to lose yeah. money and you've got a certain amount of money, as long as you stick to that amount, you don't go, oh, I'm so close. If I had another 10 bucks, I could win it all back. The moment you start saying that shit, that's when you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah I, when you get I, like, this next personal, one's it, so I feel I it. be hyper aware of things like that. Um, so gambling is not one that i want to get into too much it hasn't and been I so much lately it, doing because i don't that's my thing is like i haven't what realized it so much lately but mainly because i don't have anybody to play with regularly but i used to have a pretty huh hello Jables? okay yeah i'm here now Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I have, an, I have an addictive personality, so I have to be hyper aware of things like that. And I found yeah. out about that during just like a local neighborhood poker game. Honestly, like, oh, yeah. if uh, if I had people in the, the community, in my little, and by community, I mean my physical residence that I was cooler with, I'd be cool with like a penny any game of Texas Hold'em or something. Yeah, yeah. I'd probably lose That's... a lot, but I didn't. It, 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 it's a penny any game. You, you, you bring max ten bucks. Yeah. Depending on how many people you have, you get like thirty to fifty bucks if you win it all. Well, and it's all well, in we... coins. So who the hell cares? Well, we would just do. Uh, we do buy in is like ten bucks, and then the max was thirty. <laughs> I think yeah. no, no. I think the max might have been twenty. I don't know, but buying was. Oh no, never mind. What we did was, you buy in for ten bucks, and then if you lost that ten bucks, you could rebuy in. But you couldn't like stack up like, hey, I'm coming in with twenty bucks. Everybody else only has ten. I'm gonna, I'm gonna strong hand everybody. Yeah, you know. I'd say uh, everyone just brings their their change. <laughs> and if you need coins, someone just keeps a stash of coins. Yeah. No, you. No, you but that, have that's everybody come in. You have everybody come in with ten, and then uh, you play with chips, and then at the end of the night, you know, you just divvy out the cash. Yeah, that's that's an option. But if you're like, if you're just doing a penny any game, they, there's not much of a point. Hell, you could do just a single dollar and s still be solid for an entire mm -hmm. night. Especially if you're just doing pennies. Oh, max yeah. buy-in is three dollars. Okay. <laughs> 300 pennies, man. <laughs> yeah. Just have fifteen dollars like, worth of pennies. I used to... And I say used to, maybe because nowadays I don't have anybody to play with, but... Yeah, I used to have a very, you know, like, non-destructive poker habit. Mm -hmm. I just really liked to play. I played as often as I could. Yeah, they're... Yeah. They didn't become too much of a problem. I just became aware of it during that time. I was like, okay, I need to set some new rules for myself. I think I mentioned that story where I taught my younger cousin how to play, and he ended up thanking me at a Thanksgiving dinner. He's like, hey, thanks for teaching me how to play Texas. I've won some money doing it. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm a terrible influence. <laughs> 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 the 
there was there was one night the game was going really late and I only had like a couple bucks left in chips mm-hmm. and I was just like I was just kind of ready to be done I was okay with losing this next couple of bucks and I just started playing blind and just like not even looking just sort of just betting on feeling and I just kept winning and then I lost it all but I was winning for a while like it happens if you win stuff you have to be ready to lose it yeah I got back up I got I got from like two dollars back up to like ten dollars <laughs> and then I uh yeah Yeah, then I lost it all again because I was already ready to lose it. Uh, that's really the key to uh, gambling. If you're not willing to lose it, don't bet it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I like a I like a fun scratcher, like Slingo. I like the ones where you actually like play a game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've seen multiple people. It's like, oh, my favorite are like the crossword ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm more of a slinger. Where guy. You, you can win something big or you could lose. Yeah. Or, yeah. or anywhere in between, really. Yeah. When I worked a convenience store, the most irritating motherfuckers. Like, even more so than the drunks and the crackheads were the scratch-off people. I fucking hated them. Yeah, I'd buy, like... I think Slingas are, like, five bucks a piece. Hey, Skull. Um, Skull! Yeah, they're, like, three or five bucks a piece. And out of, like, two or three of them, I'd win a total of, like, ten or fifteen bucks. And then, yeah, yeah. So that was, like, people I, I'm, I'm talking much about breaking even with Slingo cards at this point. But people yeah. I'm the people I was talking about are the ones that would come up and like but over the little, course of an over the course of an hour spend like three hundred dollars on scratch offs. Yeah, that's a little yeah, insane. Yeah, and then they're, just, they're just like the shitty little one dollar ones that. You just scratch off the three things, see if a couple things match. No, like they would see, like they were these sad fucks that would like, you know, like they would like buy specific tickets and they would ask about the numbers on the tickets. Mm-hmm. You know, like they would scratch all their shit in the store. And if they won something, they would immediately cash it in towards buying more tickets. Yeah. And like they'd be holding up the line. Because they have to stand there and get every single one of their fucking tickets cashed in. Mm -hmm. So they can order a whole bunch more. And uh, did you ever have any of those fucks that just scratch off the little barcode and don't even be the thing? I don't think we had any of those. But I know okay. that they started to I've, get... <laughs> I've seen that. That's like eventually, policy changed. Where it's like, you're not allowed to tell them what the numbers on the ticket are anymore. Cool. Because, you know, like, you know, they were trying to, like, curb this whole, you know, like, um, people thinking they figured out the system bullshit. And, ah, uh, man, these people would get so well, fucking shitty. There we were is like, that can't tell one you that. guy. Yeah, because there was one guy that actually did figure out the system at one point. Yeah. But he was like a mathematician. So, you know, <laughs> that's a little different. And then there was, I don't know if it was the same guy, but there was another guy, like he won, he won the jackpot on a scratcher. Mm -hmm. And then the news wanted him to like reenact the moment, you know, for their B-roll footage. And then uh -huh. he won again. Yeah, that shit's crazy. Yeah. But yeah, also, man. Yeah. Fuck that guy. <laughs> but yeah, man. Like it, it, it got crazy. Like it's 
it's crazy just like watching somebody like get like straight up like hostile like fucking cuss you out just because you won't tell them the number on the bottom of a scratch off card mm-hmm. it's yeah. like you got a fucking problem my man oh my yeah my local store moved to just having the vending machine because of that gotta buy them at the vending machine I can't tell you the number. It's inside the machine. Hey, bullshit. Uh, yeah, Skull. That's fine that you don't gamble at all. Yeah, I've never gambled anything. I have never even bought a scratch-off ticket in my life. Every scratch-off I've ever done was something that was given to me. Because that's like one of my mom's uh, stocking stuffers every year is um, scratch-off tickets. That's fun. I like that. Yeah. So it's the only time I ever play. I never win anything, but... Or when I do, it's just like, oh, you want a dollar? That precisely pays for this ticket. Eh, I'm not going to bother turning that in. (laughs) There's a comedian, Kevin Ryan. Honestly, Scratchers is a gift. As long as they're not the only gift, mm-hmm. or a pretty decent. Yeah, it's a great fun stocking thing. stuffer because it'll either be great or it'll be nothing. Oh, yeah, like so. I said, like <laughs> my mom will add them in there. So like you know, like you know, like oh, like here's some like uh, Lindor truffles, and like here's a couple of scratch off tickets, and like maybe yeah. some peppermint bark. Yeah, my there's a there's a comedian Kevin Ryan. What his parents used to do. Is they would just buy all the kids like scratchers, just, just for funsies, and mm-hmm. then if they want anything, uh, they would just instantly pay them out and just like cash in the scratchers later. Yeah, yeah. So they just a like, bunch. Yeah. All the ones that I've ever won on were like very like basically would just pay for the ticket. So it's just like. It's not even worth the gas for me to take this to a gas station. Well, that's when you just keep it in your pocket next time you're at the gas station. Yeah, a couple bucks. Essentially a free soda. Not anymore. How much are you you paying for soda? Fuck, man. A 20 ounce is like $2.39. God damn. Nothing's cheap for me. Yeah, we it's like I wish I could taxes get taxes in the city, and it's... I wish I could get Actually, a fucking Coca Cola for a buck. That'd be nice. I can get a I can get a can of soda for a buck. Yeah, a can maybe. Yeah, probably not for a buck. Maybe before tax. Uh, yeah, I'm talking vending machine. Even then, mm-hmm. I think like mm-hmm. nowadays vending machine price for like a can, a 12 ounce can of anything, at least around here, is like a buck twenty nine. Yeah, at my at my work, it's just a buck for a can of soda. <laughs> well, at your job specifically, they might have had the price modified specifically for their machines as a employee convenience. Well, it used to be when I first started working there, it was like, like sixty cents. Mm. It's gone up. Even then, that even then, that's lower than the average running rate for a lot of vending machines. Well, people at my work buy a lot of soda. That vending machine runs out a lot. First thing to run out, though, Dr Pepper. Very popular at my work. I respect it. I like Dr. Pepper. Yeah. I especially like so. that new flavor that they got. They got a new flavor? Yeah, strawberries and cream. Hmm. I haven't seen it. I haven't been able to try it. I don't get all the cool good. stuff you do. This uh, Mountain Dew Baja Passion Fruit that I just opened is pretty good, too. Nice. Yeah, I had the guava one earlier. Been looking for them for a bit. Found them both at my local Kroger. 
You guys want to talk about Rockstar being assholes? Absolutely, because they're assholes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fuck Rockstar games. Honestly. Yeah. Who? What it? makes you think? Hold on, Skull. What makes you think Coke is going out of business? Yeah, no fucking way, dude. <laughs> Do you know how much yeah. shit the Coca Cola company owns? Also, on on top of that, their side hustle is to create medical cocaine for pharmaceutical companies. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Coca-Cola company owns ESPN. Or that might be PepsiCo. It's one of them. Yeah. No, no, Disney owns ESPN. Oh, that's right. Does Coke own again? Well, like, a lot lot of them... Like, they have stakes, like, in, like, all kinds of restaurant industry. Like, PepsiCo owns Taco Bell, for example. They just outright own that company. Got rid of 200 drink brands? That's not uncommon. Yeah, because they have 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 its repertoire. I was going to say, if shit's not selling, you just... You downsize... Yeah. It's, so, so well, what, what's really going to happen? They'll put out a bunch of different flavors, and then whatever doesn't sell, they just nix it. Well, also, some of these aren't selling, so they're just rebranding. Like Sierra Mist, that's gone, but it's been replaced by the exact same thing. Starry is not the same as Sierra Mist. It's, so. Yeah, it's not the same. It's You're really right. <laughs> You're right. But I would kind of like if they brought Sierra Mist back. <laughs> Do you think this is a new Coke old? uh, Do you think this is a new Coke old Coke situation? I doubt it. (laughs) Oh, are they going to rebrand the new drink as Sierra Mist again? uh, (laughs) Back by popular demand. Sierra Mist, but it's the fucking Starry formula or whatever. Yeah. Well, a lot of the thing about, like, um, New Coke slash Coke 2 is it was put out there while Coca-Cola was working on reformulating the original Coke to use corn syrup instead of cane sugar. So when they brought back Coca-Cola Classic, it wasn't actually what they were selling previously. It was the new version of the corn syrup. But it was close enough, yeah, that uh, people did, uh, overlooked it. Which, if they had done that with Starry, yeah, maybe like people, they could have gotten away with it. There are some people to this day that don't realize that New Coke was just a really brilliant marketing strategy on the Coca-Cola company's part. Hands down, brilliant. Not only did they get to reformulate their main seller to use something cheaper, but they also increased their market share. <laughs> yeah, and they got everybody to forget what the cane sugar Coke tasted like. <laughs> and, yeah, it, uh, it was diabolical, but it fucking worked. <laughs> uh, 7 Up and Dr. Pepper are their own company, separate from Coke. Yep. No, no, 7 Up is. Isn't Seven Up owned by like Pepsi or Co- oh. no? No, it's the Seven um, Up and Dr Pepper are like their own thing. Well, collectively, like, together known, they're their own thing. Collectively, it's known as the uh, Seven Up Dr Pepper. No, Dr. PepsiCo Pepper's Snapple Crew Group. Seven Up is owned by PepsiCo. That's strange, huh? They must have. Uh, at least for international distribution only. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's international. Okay. We're in America. Well, the thing is, like, Dr. Pepper shows up in both, like, restaurants that have, you know, like, um, Coca-Cola products, but they also show up in restaurants that have Pepsi products. That's... Yeah. (laughs) So, it looks like uh, Dr. Pepper 
has uh, both has the Coca-Cola and PepsiCo company as a parent company. I don't know how that works. Yeah, it's probably just but uh, yeah. it's Wikipedia, so it wouldn't lie to me, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's currently Dr. Pepper Snapple Group, which is a subsidiary. Originally, Dr. Pepper Seven Up. Yeah, uh, there's a store by me that still sells Snapple in the glass bottles. Apparently, That's cool. Dr. Yeah. Pepper and Snapple was acquired by Curing. And is now curing Dr. Pepper. Mellow Yellow still exists, Skull. Yeah. Yeah, Mellow Yellow. But it was may supposed... be one of those 200 brands. We don't know yet. Yeah, Dr. Pepper has a lot of stuff under its banner as well. Like, um, they have Big Red, is one of the things that they acquired. Mm -hmm. The big Basically, red, if it's river, like Dr. Pepper, they've ones. acquired yeah, it. About that. <laughs> yeah, current products, uh, 7-Up, A&W, Big Red, Cactus Cooler, which that's something I haven't heard of. Canada oh, Dry. Cactus Cooler. What the fuck is a Cactus Cooler? Like, so, what flavor is that? Cactus Cooler is an orange pineapple flavored soft drink sold primarily in Southern California and the surrounding southwestern United States. Makes sense. I kind of want to try it. That sounds interesting. Distrib distinguished by its orange, yellow, and green label with saguaro cacti, the soda is part of Curing Dr. Pepper and was previously distributed under the Canada Dry brand. Cool. What was it called? Cactus? Cactus Cooler. And it is a orange pineapple soda. Sounds pretty tasty. I that that I gotta say that labeling re reminds me of Surge for some reason. Yeah, like it's it's a very kind of retro looking uh, label. I like it. Screen. Oh yeah, yeah Doctor Pepper moment. also has uh, RC Cola under its banner, the best cola. Yeah, underrated cola. <laughs> At least of the mainstream ones. That's my favorite. Yeah, I heard... And, I was listening to a podcast and people were talking shit about RC Cola. I wanted to punch them. They've got so. Sun Drop, which is nasty. And then they got yeah, Squirt, which so is Well, I'm not surprised awesome. you haven't had S Surge. It's kind of after your time. <laughs> And then it I, made us. I like it made that, a mini comeback, and then it disappeared again. And then it might be in some places now. Yeah. That looks so retro, though. That is a very retro-looking can. Like I, I like it. it. Yeah. Like it looks straight out of the nineties. I'm I'm cool with it. I'm tired of all this minimalist, uh, modernized crap when it comes to brand designs. Yeah. Let's have some fun again. Yeah, like Mountain Dew is like one of the only ones. It's like it's like let's just put a bunch of weird like art shit on our labels. Yeah. So I just looked up uh Surge Surge Soda and one of the questions people also asked was why was Surge Soda banned? <laughs> I remember that rumor. Yeah. I remember that rumor as a kid. Yes, that's the thing. I was like, people were like, "What happened to Surge?" And it's like, "What happened to a lot of products similar to Surge?" It just lost out to Dr Pepper, not Dr Pepper. Um, it lost out to Mountain Dew. Yeah, yeah. Sales just, just weren't high. I preferred Surge to Mountain Dew. I liked Surge, and uh, <laughs> God damn it, fucking hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. Did I scare you? No. Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> I'm trying to find a, an image of a surge can. 
A good one. An old one, not a new one. Dr. Pepper and Curing also have uh, IBC oh, I Root Beer, Yoohoo, Verner's, which I like Verner's. It's not as good as it used to be, though. This is Surge, tiny as it can get. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that should Surge should have been a watermelon soda. Based on those colors. And that yeah. pattern. And then Mountain Dew is just like, oh, you want watermelon, do you? <laughs> I mean, Major Melon's really not bad. And if you mix it with Code Red, it's amazing. I was always a fan of a uh, Red Bull mixed with an RC Cola. That'll kick your teeth in a little bit. The one that I always bring up that like was a thing in the 90s that just kind of came and went was Storm. I remember seeing it, never had it. So it was like, um, Storm. Uh, oh, well, I'll, I'll hold the fuck, Skull. Just get a lemonade. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right, just mean, get a lemonade or a uh, Arizona well, Arnold Palmer. The, yeah. the thing is, is that like Sprite, well, like Coca-Cola and Sprite, but like Sprite came out with their fucking limonade, mm. which like they, they did such a big marketing thing behind that. And it finally comes out and I get a bottle of it and I'm like, this kind of reminds me of Squirt. Yeah, I mean... I wish I had closest, a Squirt right now. The closest thing I can think of to, like, a lemonade soda, like a carbonated sort of lemonade, is uh, Monster has an Aussie-style lemonade flavor. Hmm. Which Squirt's is, good, uh, by the way. I recommend that people try Squirt. Yeah. Uh, I don't like grapefruit. That is an okay opinion to have. Yeah. I just sport. keep trying it every year or two, and it's just it's just not hitting me. I don't I, I mind. Get like, I, get the, like a really... I don't mind grapefruit soda. I don't like grapefruits. Yeah. Like I. I like both. I like grapefruit and candy too. Yeah, grapefruit. Grapefruit has like a dirt taste to me. Kind of like a that's the thing. Is like cilantro I, tastes like soap to some people. That's kind of how grapefruit tastes to me. There's my like wife weird, deals like with that dirt bitterness. I've yeah. never seen people say that like grapefruit has a dirt flavor, but I've seen multiple people say that about dark chocolate. Yeah, I love dark chocolate. Oh, so do I. Me too. But I like seventy like percent is about as high as I can go for. It's just like, mm, no, nah, it's a little too much. I like a good, uh, I like a good coffee bean covered in dark chocolate. It's like fucking great. Like my friend, like she loves like dark chocolate that gets into like the eighty-five or even ninety range. And I'm like, how do you? Eat That's that a bit shit? much. Yeah. Yeah, I prefer dark chocolate over milk chocolate. Yeah. Well, you know, like that's, Speaking of you chocolate, know, want to talk about buttholes? <laughs> I thought we were going to talk about Rockstar. <laughs> I, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather talk about Rockstar, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're not narrowing the hair away from the from the brown brown starfish. <laughs> we're, we're talking about Rockstar and how they should narrow away their brown starfish hair. Yeah. So essentially, Rockstar got rid of about two hundred cars in the game. 
Um, unless you subscribe to GTA Plus. Oh, fuck off. Yeah. Not only can you not get these cars anymore unless you subscribe to GTA Plus, if you already had the cars, you can no longer you no longer have them. You see, like, I feel like that's grounds for a class action suit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of those so, cars came in fucking DLC. A lot of them came in DLC. A lot of them, like, people just worked hard to get. Completing missions and whatnot. Um, you know, like, and it's then, like, oh, but, like, they were, the like, the DLCs were, like, released for free. It's like... Yeah, but it's like, how many motherfuckers, though, gave you money for the fucking shark cards in order to get access to the content more quickly? Yeah, or... And you just locked just, them like, out of shit they already paid for to get more money. Yeah, how many people just, like, grinded missions in order to purchase certain cars with in-game money? We're not talking... Like using yeah. real money, but they they use their time. They grinded those missions. Yeah. Well, that's a time investment. It's like yeah. you're just taking away their time investment at that point. You're taking away their that, reason to the play the to, game. On top of that, taking the time to like raise your driving skills so you can fully upgrade the cars, and then grinding even more missions to make more money, so that you can so that you can afford to upgrade the cars. And, and now you, you like, just don't have it. Upgrading to get a garage big enough to house all the cars that you wanted and having oh, yeah. insurance on all of those cars in case something happens to them. Yeah. It's just Paying like money for no, like it's custom like, license plates or whatever. It's like you already cars. have all you already have all that stuff for this car, but you can't use it anymore because give me money. Yeah, that's straight up removing these people's reason to continue playing their game, giving them less reason to buy GTA. Plus. No, no, like, it's even worse than that. It's the company actively stealing from you. Yeah. Oh no, I don't disagree they are with stealing. you. I'm talking about I'm talking about from the company's perspective. They're thinking, "Oh, these people play all the time. They'll pay for GTA Plus now." No. No, you've taken away their reason to even bother paying for GTA Plus. Yeah, if you because added extra if... stuff with GTA Plus without taking... I would even be okay with... These cars are no longer available to get unless you have GTA Plus. But if you already own it, you keep it. If they just well, yeah. did that... For even shitty, it, that, I'd I'm be more okay, okay with. On, I'm still on, not on. okay I, I, with I, it, I, but... Hold yeah, on, more I'm not totally okay. okay with it. I'd be more okay with it. Like it's, I was just reading her say like it's, it's still shitty. But like that's always been like the war gaming model, is like when they release a certain premium tank, and then that premium tank turns out to be completely fucking busted because they can't balance anything, and they remove it from the store permanently. That means that nobody else can go and buy that tank. But if you already have it. They're not taking it away from you. You paid for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah Whereas already, in this case, already, it's like, you already, already have this car. You already have this piece of content, but we are taking it away from you now. But if you give us this monthly subscription, you can have it. That's extortion. Oh, well, with the way Rockstar runs... You're not getting that same car back. No. That's way too much. That's way too much data to store. Yeah. So like, even if you do get quote that car back, you would just get access to it back. You're more than likely going to have to repurchase the car, repurchase all the upgrades and customization, get a new insurance policy on it. Yeah. Which means you have to go through everything you already did again. Oh, Why swear, the man. fuck would you do? Skull. Grand Theft Auto V is a fucking cancer. I hate what this game has done to the industry. Yeah. Me too. I'm still waiting on GTA 6. Grand Theft Auto fuck V came GTA out 6. in 2013. 
No, I, I'm serious. At this point, like, fuck GTA 6. Everybody watching at home, or like, who manages to see this later, look at this. This is Rockstar. This is what they think of you. Don't fucking buy Grand Theft Auto 6. Fuck this company. Yeah. They don't deserve your money. Like, everyone got pissed off at CD Projekt Red for the release of Cyberpunk 2077. And in some cases, legitimately so. In some ways, legitimately so. Yeah. yeah CD, CD Projekt Red, Red actually does took away deserve things your... from you. Yeah, they never to took away things from you. To get it back. And then on top of that, they actually have gone through and earned a lot of that trust back. Yeah, same thing with, like, No Man's Sky. Those developers got in hot water because they didn't have anything. Now, to be fair, to developers. be fair, No Man's Sky was... It, it was honestly, I'd say it was uh, worse than uh, CD Projekt Red's deal. But... Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the game they pitched did was not in any way exist. Yeah. It di still technically doesn't exist. It's it's gotten I've heard it's gotten really it's close. It's gotten about as close as it can, but it still technically doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah, I would say probably But I'm, I'm still I'm still relatively okay with it cuz they're still working on it. Like, oh no, I'm not worried about it. Yeah. I've played it. I enjoy it. I'm just kind of making a point. Yeah, I I respect what they did after the release. I should say that. That's more. Yeah. Well, yeah, like coming out after just the like, release. We're just fixing this all for free. We're spending all the money that we made on just fixing this and possibly running our own company out of business just to fix this. We're just going to work around the clock. Oh, yeah, oh, like, oh, oh, make oh, this oh, better. Come that way. There is come an integrity way. to coming you out. You got to stay like, away from the red yeah, button. Yeah, we, we massively hit the red promised. Button. But we're going to fix that and try and get it as close to what we promised as possible because we feel like we owe that to you for overpromising. Yeah, I saw a documentary about the whole don't, thing. Don't touch that. And I'm don't. Like, I, I have a lot of respect for the developers for like how they handled it and what they did to fix it. But the thing is, you know, like, I would say actually one of the most egregious examples of this I ever saw was um, with uh, Anthem. Where okay. like, where the uh, developers, like they have their whole like uh, their thing at E3. And like the E3 like pre-rendered thing that they showed off. That, that was the first time that the developers even realized it's like, oh fuck, that's the game that we're making. Yeah. Yeah, and there's admit like, you know stop, stop CD Projekt Red games for one thing. Let's just there are that, certain that. companies I would accept a, a pre-release. I and that's mostly f so that you have you don't have to think about it. Um, and I can't even think of them off the top of my head anymore because there's so few of them and it's just like everything has become shit. Yeah, it used to be. Pre-release was so that you had it day of release and you didn't have to worry about them running out of stock. It was still yeah. a bad idea because it gave the the developer the ability to just rely on that pre-release. But it wasn't the yeah. same deal. Nowadays, all pre-release does is give you the ability to have it on your computer the day that it comes out so you don't have to download all this shit in order to just play it yeah but a lot of that's all games are coming out so fucking broken that it's yeah just... that's the other yeah, factor stop. day one patches well, are bigger than the fucking games themselves i'm talking what i'm talking about isn't that uh it, it is not taking into account the state of the game yeah the game used to be a lot more completed usually yeah yeah i i think but one one they didn't have the online connection so they they couldn't just update it over time 
Uh, two, it was usually physical media, not digital. So again, you're dealing with scarcity problems. And it's just they had they still had the incentive because of those first two in order to actually produce a game. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, oh, we can push the launch date up because we don't have to be 100% done and ready to go already loaded onto the CD before we send it to you. Yeah, the the only company that really does that I think is Nintendo, honestly. Uh, with the exception of that new Pokemon game. Yeah, yeah but that's game that's why, that's why I have never Kingdom Day release. 1. Because I was like... Honestly, Nintendo needs to go in personally to Game Freak and start getting rid of motherfuckers, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, they need to go full yeah. Yakuza on those fuckers. Yeah. It's just like, that was fucking unacceptable. That's yeah. not happening again. Yeah, that's not a Honestly, Nintendo, they, they, that's not a Nintendo quality game. The early games were never very well balanced, but at least they fucking worked. Yeah. Yeah, and then Sword and Shield was <clears> like a little janky, but it was it was fine. It was manageable. It's running on a Switch. Like though those were like the issues with it. Yeah, the, the, the biggest thing that was pissed people so off fucked. about Sword and Shield was like, you know, it's like, oh yeah, it's like, um, not all the Pokemon are in yet, but it's like, but we'll be having this stuff coming out later, you know, like the Crown Tundra is just like, wait, huh? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, like, I hate to use Tim as an example, but I will bring up Angry Joe. Because he's been bringing up a point for years, like when it comes to like the video game industry, especially when it comes to stuff, you know, like, um, like sports games and how they're basically just a roster update every year that you pay full price for. Yeah. And they basically don't change anything or don't fix anything. Yeah. I know some people that, uh, that really like sports games. But, but they you said wait, you know, like, they wait two or three years in between each game. Yeah, but they you know, like, will he's... update stats. They will update graphics every few years. They may make some engine changes, but no. probably not. In the case of Madden, it's probably been the same game for the last 15 years. Yeah. Just the GUI may have changed or something along those lines. But... Like, inconsequential, really. You know, Joe has said, you know, you know, like, while it is egregious, you know, like, companies, like, keep just, like, doing the same thing over and over again. Like, in, especially when it comes to, like, the sports games, like, he'll basically point at the screen after a certain point. He's like, this is your fault. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when that game crashes and you're looking back at that black screen and you see your own reflection, that's whose fault it is. That's who to blame. That's who, yeah. who to blame. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like they for know agree- you'll buy this shit. Yeah, that's the point I'm getting to. It's like for as egregious everything as Rocks Rockstar is doing right now, you are to blame. In part. Because you keep letting them get away with it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's even, like, do you really think the they kingdom? would implement this policy? Do you really think they'd be so confident to just take shit away from you that you already have and expect you to pay to get it back if they didn't think that you would fucking do it? Yeah. I don't even know. Considering how much money they've made off of that fucking game already. It's the most sold game of all time. Yeah, it's. Uh, if well, they end. I don't think if it's they the were to end people sold, playing this game, it is. It is. I actually Hold looked on. it up. It is at the top. Yeah, because I know they've sold 180 million copies since 2013. Which is absurd for any video game. If they were to end the people playing this game with this move, it wouldn't change much. They've already made so much off of it. They could pay for GTA 6 uh, three times over. 
Yeah, they're allegedly working on it. It's um, probably just going to be... If it does come out, it'll be as a, a, a result of something like this happening. And it's just going to be okay, a GTA V clone with uh, slightly better graphics and a slightly different story. I take well, it I heard back. They were, I heard they were doing all major cities in the U.S. Is it the, is uh, Minecraft that's the best selling, but... Again, Minecraft was given away by a lot of people, so I'm not yeah, sure. Minecraft exactly. is also yeah. Minecraft free. is a hard one to justify because a good portion of it was free, and then they started selling it later. But as for like a full price triple A game, nothing tops Grand Theft Auto. Nothing. Yeah. Well, hopefully, Tears. Of the yeah, Tears of the Kingdom. I waited a couple of days. Because I, uh, I follow some people that purposefully try to break games on day one. Yeah. Um, and when their only complaints were, like, some frame rate issues, and they weren't able to break the game yet after a few days, then I was like, yeah, I'll buy that. Well, actually, like... We saw That's... earlier, like, that guy that got a hold of, like, an early build of Grand Theft Auto 6 and Rockstar going full fucking force of the law on them. Mm -hmm. Not as bad as Magic the Gathering sending the Pinkertons after something. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not the first time! Yeah, that one just got really popular because he had a following. It wasn't even his fault! No. No, somebody just had, like, the newest shit in stock already, just ready to distribute to stores, and then misread the thing. Because the names were really close. Yeah. <laughs> That's... I said, like, when, I, when we were originally talking about it and brought it up to Bar, Bar's like, fuck, man. We actually are in the cyberpunk timeline. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but without all the cool shit. Yeah, and then after we, that, we all got this fucking AI stuff started becoming really thugs big. to menace people. <laughs> yeah, well, and then after, like, a couple months after that, all the AI stuff started becoming really big. And so, yeah, we are at the beginning of the cyberpunk universe. I just say to get wild, boys. Let's go. I just, I just want my chair that I can plug into already. Can I can I just have that? Yeah. I need to get away for a while at times. Yeah, exactly. I'll work a job in the metaverse making coffees or some shit. I don't care. I'll be really good at it. I'll misspell everybody's name on purpose and make it funny. Yeah, I also have, like, to streamline the experience. That's the exact opposite. Having to buy a separate subscription is the exact opposite of streamlining. <laughs> We're you streamlining know, our revenue stream. Yeah, like, <laughs> never mind the fact that the game is is in shambles it's falling apart because of its shitty overworked net code that you have done nothing to fix yeah instead of instead of just working on another game for the last 10 fucking years we've just been adding a bunch of wild DLC that our servers can't handle that well yeah, and that completely destroys game balance with every single update. Oh, you just have, like, a jet bike now? What's up with that? Yeah, like, uh, the Oppressor is what it's called. And that ended up being exactly what it turned into, because, like, you may as well not even have fucking planes or attack helicopters. They're going to get absolutely murdered by this goddamn thing. Yeah. I, that's another thing. Can we be reasonable with some DLC? GTA, I'm looking at you. Like, yeah, add some more cars and stuff. 
they don't have to be wild and crazy. There's like new there's new cars that come out all the time. I mean, look at Cyberpunk 2077. Its DLC coming out in September is basically a relaunch of the game. That's the other thing is like, you know, like every time that like Grand Theft Auto does a DLC, it's like it's never like, oh, this adds more variety to the game. It's like if you do anything competitively based in this game, you get this or you're fucked. It's like every new supercar that comes out in the game immediately makes all of the old ones in your gra garage irrelevant as far as racing goes. It's like if you want to be competitive, you have to get the new stuff. You can't just use the stuff that you're used to or the stuff that you liked best because yeah. it's obsolete. That's true with way too many games, too. Like, Destiny had that same issue. The only things that could possibly carry over were, uh, fucking, I can't even remember what they're called, but they're the, the yellow ones, the uniques or something like that. And you could only have one of the, huh? Something like that. Yeah. You could only have one weapon and one armor piece of that type on your character at a time. But you could swap between them and they they made major changes, but the new ones would come out and it could change how the game balancing. Sometimes it did. Sometimes it didn't. But everything other than those was utter trash as a result. Yeah. And you know, like as I said, like with uh, Grand Theft Auto, the most egregious example was the oppressor. <coughs> it's like, why would you ever own an attack helicopter when you have this? Yeah. It. Like, GTA is supposed to be relatively realistic. Like. Keep it to vehicles that exist. Yeah, of course, you know, like, even then, like, relatively realistic, it's like, it's like, they took away all the fun shit that you could do in the previous games. What did it's they like, take away? Like, just a bunch of, like, the silly cheats. You know, like, Grand Theft Auto San oh, yeah. Andreas was the absolute best, still, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, no, in, in single player mode, they still have a bunch of silly cheats. No, nah, it's not to the same degree. Not even close. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, it's like, there is no cheat in Grand Theft Auto V for me to just turn everybody into Elvis. <laughs> that is fun. Yeah, you're and right. then And then turn on Civilian Riot and just see a bunch of Elvises setting fire to things and running around with TVs. <laughs> fair point. Fair point. Yeah, San Andreas, <laughs> I, I think, was... old Grand Theft Auto so much. San Andreas was peak GTA. Oh, that's another place that fucking Grand Theft Auto fucked us. The, uh... The... Uh, the... The remasters. Yeah, that uh, was a blatant, disgusting cash grab. Yeah. You're, you're going to remaster with, like, the PSP versions. And they didn't but, even do it themselves. They outsourced it to somebody else. And it yeah. turned out to be shit. Like, I was excited for it. And I'm glad and, I didn't pre-order it. In addition I, I to outsourcing it to but someone I did, else, they I took all it. of the original versions out of the store so you couldn't purchase them anymore. Yeah, I bought it... Uh, I bought it a couple days after it came out without, like, really hearing anything about it. Because I was like, oh, cool, I'm going to play like San Andreas. Have a great time. Nope. You get, it's just completely functionally broken. Yeah. Yeah, if I want to play San Andreas, I have to sail the high seas first. Yeah, and I was... Yeah, and I was, like, running around and doing stuff. And it was, like... I was having... 
just like this internal battle like is this a situation where the game has always been like this and I just remember it differently and I started looking things up and I was like oh no this is just fucked okay yeah this is not how it was cause like um, Spyro and Crash Bandicoot, those remasters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's how my brain remembers those looking, anyways. Like my brain kind of filled in the details when I was a kid. Yeah, it's kind of like it's same thing with my brain and Diablo too. Yeah, that's also a great one because that's the same game. They just mm-hmm. updated the graphics. And they did some some minor rebalancing, but it's basically the same game, and I get to enjoy it as I enjoyed the original. Yeah, I got into playing a lot of the Command and Conquer series uh, like six mm. months ago, and they actually have a toggle button for original graphics and current graphics. So you just yeah. you just press the single button, and it changes the graphics from old to new, so you can really see the difference right there. Same and with Diablo 2. Same with yeah. Diablo 2. I was like, I... This isn't... It's supposed to be better graphics. This isn't much better than it was. And Hit toggle. toggle. Holy like, shit! Oh, shit! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I will go How to the I one... How did I know what that was? <laughs> I will go to the one place that capitalism hasn't destroyed! Spice! <laughs> The spice uh, must flow. Fucking love. Yeah, but I was like, I was playing Command and Conquer Tiberian Sun, and you know, kind of like, uh, if you're the nod, you you get the attack dogs and shit. Mm-hmm. And I switch. I, I was just curious. I was like, yeah, those look like little attack dogs. That's exactly how I remember it. And then I switched to original graphics, and I was like, how did I even know that that was a dog back then? It just kind of told me, I guess. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> the way it moves. It's one of those, like, like, I... it's like, that's a dog. It's like, yeah, sure, all right. And then you actually I gotta look admit, at it, it's like, wait, what? <laughs> I, I gotta admit, with original graphics, I always thought that uh, the paladin looked like he had uh, pantyhose pulled over his face. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, but like I said, playing the remaster of Spyro, I always thought Spyro looked at that, and then I went online and looked at the original graphics, and I was like, Spyro did not look like that. Wow. What was my brain doing back then? Yeah, kids these days will never understand, and I'm talking to you, Skull. (laughs) Yeah, like the imagination had to do a lot more of the work. Yeah, I understand more now why people thought video games were dumb back then. <laughs> because of that. Hey, we still had some cool shit. I don't care. Oh, um, they're still cool. Skull, oh, yeah, Skull, 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 you played Ratchet and Clank and God of War. You have no idea what we're talking about then. Yeah, no idea. <laughs> I'm sorry. You are an itty bitty baby buddy. Yeah. I was in high school when God of War came out. I was gonna say God of War came out in like the early two thousands. When did it when did God of War come? I don't think I was in high school when the original came out. And if I wasn't in high school when the original came out, then you definitely weren't. Uh, 2005. 2005? Yeah, I wasn't in high school yet. Okay, so 2005, I was... I was still in high school. I was was almost out of it. Well, I think... No, I would have... I would have been getting ready to start high school. Because I graduated in 2009. 
Yeah, I graduated 2011. Yeah, I was in junior high. Yeah, I would have, I would have, because I started to high school in November. So, yeah. Yeah. Also, Ratchet and Clank and God of War were big jumps for graphics. Yeah. We're talking PS1 era games. Yeah. Spyro the Dragon came out on PS1. God damn it. Yeah. I remember playing that in like the Rugrats game, which was actually pretty good. Uh, which yeah, one? you had weird games that were really good back then. Nowadays, um, it's like, oh, it has anything to do with the TV show or anything like that. It's probably shit with very few exceptions. So, like, um, the one that I played was, like, uh, the one where, um, like, it had, like, story missions, but there was also, like, mini games. Like, uh, keeping okay. the keeping the cookies or, like, the chocolate milk away from Angelica by passing it between the babies. Or, um... Probably, like, the most intense story mission was, like, uh, the one where you're wandering around the house at night and you have to, like, find batteries for your flashlight to keep the ghosts away. My, <laughs> my favorite Rugrats game was Rugrats Scavenger Hunt. Hmm. That game was a lot of fun. And there so was, like... You don't have to justify yourself to us. We're just telling you, we had it rough. That's all. There was even a mission in that game where you had to like go to like the big store that had like a uh, the uh, big keyboard on the floor, and like the whole point of the mission was like activating like the reptar to fight the giant like uh, gorilla uh, okay, animatronic. Yeah, so you're talking about Rugrats Search for Reptar. Well, that was only one mission in that game. Yeah, but that's that's. I remember. I remember that game. I was more of a scavenger hunt kid, but she came out the year after. Um, well, it's either. Yeah, and I believe there was like a mini game where like, uh, like in every level, there was like a certain number of balloons that you had to find and pop. Hmm. Maybe. It's been years. No. Oh. I wonder. I'm going to search the seven seas for some Rugrats games to, <laughs> <laughs> to play. Medieval was another really cool game. Yeah. I don't know. I grew up a Nintendo family. I had a... I had a friend that had a PlayStation, though. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah. Growing up, I was always like a generation behind on video games until... Yeah, I got, I got lucky, and my first console was a 64 while it was still popular. Yeah, my dad did get a 64 while it was still popular. He had it. He hid it from us for like all because <laughs> he was too busy playing games. Well, that's the thing is like <laughs> the, the 64 that I have currently in my room is actually my dad's. He bought it for himself yeah. specifically so he could play Ocarina of Time because he had played a link to the past on my grandmother's Super Nintendo to death. And he was excited about the new Zelda game. Yep. Yeah, my dad got Ocarina of Time and Super Mario 64. And he just, my parents had a TV in their bedroom. And he would just keep that thing fucking hidden, lock the door. <laughs> just, and just be playing a. Yeah, yeah. He got it. And I actually to play have that N64 in my apartment right now. <laughs> and then I remember he bought Majora's Mask after he had uh, when it came out after he had 
beaten and done everything in Ocarina, and he just never did anything with Majora's Mask because he couldn't Majora's figure out the Mask time is a mechanic. Game. I I was not a fan of Majora's Mask. Having played both of them all the way through, it's very hard for me to decide which one is my favorite. I prefer Leg uh, uh, Ocarina of Time, but that's mostly because Majora's Mask is a lot more confusing and it's a lot more memory items. And Yeah, like, I've played through all of Majora's Mask, but I would... I would record like my last 20 minutes of gameplay on the VCR. Mm -hmm. uh, so I could just like review, okay, what was I doing last time I played this just to make sure I don't waste time going to the same spots. Yeah. Cause there's a lot to keep track of mm -hmm. in Majora's Mask, especially if you want to get all of the masks. Yeah. Like I, I had a notebook that I was taking notes in. I was recording stuff on the VCR just to, like, verify, okay, I did this, this, and this. Um, like, if a place, if it looked like a certain spot was difficult to get to, I would record that as well so I could definitely remember how to get to it. But, it, like, the time limit, I just hated it so much. Because there's, yeah. there's figure... so much to do in that game, and you just have to fucking. For me, and if you don't, if you don't well, do it all thing. on time, if you're not hitting it at the right time, you gotta go back to the start of the three days again, and hope for uh, hope you don't miss that time again. Yeah. For me, figuring out that playing uh, the song of time backwards slows down time was a fucking game changer yeah it was because like all of a sudden it's like i have double the time to do everything i need to do <laughs> yeah and that was fine but it was still there's so much to do i i like to run around and explore a bit and it i felt like i didn't get that opportunity because of the time limit well, that was the thing is like I would do like entire things where it's just like it's like I'm just going to devote this cycle to just looking around and figuring out where shit is. Yeah. And then I will reset it. And the thing is, is, like once you have a mask, it never leaves your inventory. So you yeah. never have to do that again. Yeah, it's yeah. I'm OK with all that. But, like, in Ocarina of Time, sometimes I would just boot up that game to go fishing for a couple hours. That was always fun. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I will I, admit... I had a I rough mean, day at school. Math class kind of sucked. I'm just gonna go fishing. Fuck it. Man, that makes me want to throw on my VR and go fishing. I spent, I, uh, I spent a few of the three-day cycles in uh, Majora's Mask just trying to get the fucking heart pieces from the shooting galleries. Those goddamn shooting galleries. Yeah. Uh, the N64 controller was not well suited to that. No, it was not. It was an abomination, and I still love it. Yeah. I wish <laughs> Nintendo would actually yeah. make more of them so I could fucking get one without spending $200. I think Yahtzee described it as a controller made for a race of mutant spider people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, that the, the controller was so comfy and the D-pad was rarely used for anything. Yeah, hence why, oh. you know, like, this, the standard way of holding it for most people. And we were bitching about this during a queer movie night. Because these two motherfuckers are holding in 64 controllers and Jables is getting fucking pissed. He's just like, that's not how you hold that. What are you doing? <laughs> Wait, what were we watching? Um, Holiday Heart. Oh, okay that movie where Ving Rhames was the drag queen. 
Yeah. Yeah. And Dable's had to pause the movie because he was getting super triggered about how they were holding the N64 controllers. I've played... I've put more hours on the N64 probably that I've put on the Super Nintendo and I've put a shit ton of hours on the Super Nintendo and I'm also including the amount of time I put in on the Switch for the Super Nintendo stuff that they have there um mm -hmm. cause the N64 also had party games we had 007 Goldeneye played that all the time Mario Kart 64 my whole family would get in on that shit like there is nothing funnier than watching my aunt and uncle play Mario Kart together. Just the insults that they come up with for each other. Classic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you should see me and my sisters play. Because <laughs> uh, I just got really good at it at one point. And it's like, oh, what? You can't win? What's going on with you guys? Because I would always get first. <laughs> You're cheating somehow. Like, no. No, I just know the game better than you guys. As I'm drifting around a corner. <laughs> it's because of my aunt and uncle that for years I ended up referring to the shells as hats. What? Because my what? aunt, she would get so upset that my uncle was like, damn you with that blue hat. <laughs> okay. Oh my god! <laughs> and then would then would call him something like a dog licking hemorrhoid. <laughs> that's the way she is. That makes no fucking sense. But, all right. <laughs> As I said, like the insults between those two get wild. A dog licking hemorrhoid. Mm-hmm. Cheating her with them blue hats. How? I don't want to know. Never mind. I think your aunt has <laughs> special needs. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just very interesting. Yeah, we'll go with interesting. Yeah. Fishing would be nice in the new Zelda game if you couldn't just swim in the water and catch fish. Yeah. I'll, well, even if you could do that, I'd like to make a little boat. Yeah, that's true. Actually, yeah. fishing. But what would you catch? Would it just be the same stuff that you can catch in hand? Yeah, why not? That was a, we had an entire Zelda game that was revolving around like going or places on a boat it was one of the yeah, best oh, i'm not arguing about that i'm so not just making like, any can't arguments we have about that boats? why can't we have I, i'm boats not tears for the king i'm not talking about that part i'm just asking what would you catch would it be yeah, the same just... fish that you could catch by swimming around or would it be something different well they run away from you so I don't know. Finding a nice lake in Tears of the Kingdom and just the you're like maybe you, know, like, you the need lakes. the boat. You need the boat and like your fishing pole for like getting the bigger fish because the bigger fish tend to swim yeah. deeper down. Yeah, yeah I maybe. can agree with that. It's just sorting that out. Okay, so and what do what right, do the here, bigger fish do? Here's a thought. The if you catch fish with the fishing pole in the game. They are that fish plus. So they're like, uh, twice like as long of the you, effect. They give or you twice as benefits. many hearts. Or... Yeah. That's funny because if you think about it more, it's like you'd think it would be the other way around. It's like, because basically at that point, the game's just like, any motherfucker could just dive in and grab a fish with their bare hands. Real men use fishing poles. <laughs> Yeah. No, I think yeah, I think the the fish just get like a booster. If you like, catch it with what? Yeah. Yeah, it doubles your time or it doubles your hearts or it doubles yeah. the effect, something like that. 
Yeah, something like that. All right, I could see that. Yeah. It's like, um, this is a fish caught with a pole. It is better quality than the fish that you jumped in and just bludgeoned to death with the hilt of your sword. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, there was... They, they patched it when they fixed a lot of the duplication glitches. But you could just, like, attach every kind of fish together at one point and then activate auto build and it would just pull fish out of the water for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this doesn't seem like this should work. And Nintendo's like, no, no, it should not. Yeah. I would love to be in a room of game developers, like in the first week of their game going out to the masses and just watching people play is just like, oh, God, no, how are they doing that? No! What, oh, no, what was the, the code? How'd the code well, allow that? <laughs> well, with this game, Nintendo's been really supportive of everybody's like creative solutions for shrines and dungeons and stuff. Like, their solutions yeah, they, that they didn't intend. They've been really supportive for this game. Because that's what their goal is, too. Yeah. Yeah, they 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 wanted... Because the origin of Zelda was... Uh, he just wanted a game that reminded him of when he was a kid and he was just running around the forest and, like, exploring caves and stuff. Mm -hmm. And sort of let your it imagination turned. run wild and so this is yeah. his favorite game now because like it's it's all it's all imagination based any solution you could conceive of that works at least is yeah is the right like, one yeah and i appreciate it because i've been having a lot yeah of zelda did become Follow this exact path based for a while there. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. But I kind of liked that. Oh, I don't I, hate it. I think that's, that's one good. thing they did that... with Tears of the Kingdom that was really good. Was if you just talk to a bunch of people, they'll point you in a direction. Yeah. But, you know, you, you it's still all like exploration. It, Skull, it's too early to worry about Tears of the Kingdom DLC. And I think with that, we're uh, we're at the end of the show. Yeah, seems like a good stopping um, point to me. Yeah. Moral of our conversation, stop pre-ordering. Don't buy first day. Unless uh, you're a reviewer or someone who... who actually plays it online so others can make a choice that's yeah. a little different yeah if you're a reviewer or you're somebody that like tries to break the game or you're trying to see if there's any bugs anywhere and stuff like that you guys go ahead and do well, that i think it's but, just uh, the blanket statement is stop supporting predatory business practice yeah yeah they are exploiting you and you are letting them do it yes when that screen goes black because the game crashed and you see your own reflection, you're the person to blame. You're letting them do this. For the state the game is in. Yeah. yeah. Because as far the as it's their crashed, fault the that it crashes. You pre-ordered it. Well, yeah, it's their say. fault that it crashes, but it's your fault that they felt comfortable enough for releasing it in such a poor state. Because you have allowed them to get into the mindset of, it doesn't matter, we already have your money. And we could always later. fix it later if it's bad enough. Although Gollum 2 is not happening. <laughs> no! <laughs> also, I, I have a not saving suspicion. that with a burnt scorched earth policy. I have a sneaking suspicion that Nintendo won't Patch that uh, that one dupe glitch with the arrows. Yeah. Um, because it's so late game. 
And it does cost you arrows. Yeah. Not yeah. that those are hard to get, but it does cost you arrows, so it's not like it's a free glitch. Yeah. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, I think that's one they're not going to patch. Also, because I'm not sure how they would... Because it does cost you arrows, and it's so late game. And I'm not sure how they would patch it out. That's kind of a hard one. Yeah. Anyways. Have a good night, everybody. Yep. Later. See you next week. Same time, same place. Or maybe we'll be on kick. Who knows? Well, Follow me on Twitter we might be streaming on kick. We might be streaming on kick. We'll, we'll probably try streaming on uh, Twitch 2 for a little bit. Yeah. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye.